Om Sam Saraswati Namaha Namaste. Namaste everyone. Uh, and tonight we're going to begin our discussion of the first sanskara, which is the sanskara, the rite of passage of marriage. And remember, according to Hindu custom, there are five. There are five different kinds of marriages. The first two are pretty lowly. Uh, the, the first one is pisach, <clears throat> where the bride is stolen away by force. And the second one is oshur, where the bride is stolen away by trickery or deceit. The third is called gandharva, where the bride and the groom decide to do it themselves. The fourth is called Prajapat, where the, the bride is the responsibility of the father who gives that responsibility to the groom. That's called Kanyadan. He makes an offering of the bride. So he, he, he gives his daughter. And the fifth one is called Dibya Bipa. And this Dibya Bibha is a divine marriage, a divine union. It's the union between Shiva and Shakti. It's an equal partnership. Neither is the responsibility uh, given from the father to the groom, nor is she stolen away by force or trickery, nor is it something that they just decided to do on the spur of the moment with the slightest inspiration. It is an eternal vow of communion. Now let's first ask, why would anyone want to enter into an eternal vow of communion? And as I understand it, all through life, there are so many opportunities for people to say, you blew it. You did it wrong. You didn't give enough. You, you could have done better. And the reason we would want to come home to a partner is to be constantly reminded, you are my Shiva. You are my Shakti. You are divine. And we have an eternal divine union which transcends these bodies, which transcends this earthly interaction. It is more important than what happened at the office or at the laundry. A divine marriage is a communion, a, 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 a commitment to constantly serve as a reminder to our divine partner. Well, traditionally, Lord Shiva comes with his whole uh, group of devotees to the house of Shakti, of Parvati. Now, what would be the first thing that happened if Shiva came to my house? Or if Shiva came to any devotee's house? We would perform Shiva Puja. We would sit him down. Please sit down. Come on in. Sit down. Take your place. Let me wash your feet. Let me offer you food. Let me offer you flowers. Let me give you a garland. Let me give you everything that I possibly can to respect the divinity that has come to my door. Now, Shiva, what would he say? If he, saw, if he saw that he was being respected by the Divine Mother, who else could know and recognize the divinity within Shiva? She must be the Divine Mother. If she treats him with so much respect, all Shiva can think is, I want to worship my Durga. I want to give her flowers and, and sweets and, and garlands and new clothes and ornaments and jewelry and give her the best I can. So the marriage ceremony begins with Shiva Puja and Durga Puja. Shiva Puja performed by Durga, Durga Puja performed by Shiva. Now, once we have recognized the divinity within each other, we know how 
to see that divinity all throughout the trials and tribulations of life. We recognize that there's a divine moment in our lives where we come together just to recognize the divinity that we share. Thank you for the privilege of sharing divinity. Well now, at this point, once we have recognized that divinity, we're going to tie their hands together and we're going to sing that famous mantra that says, Brahma Vishnu Charudrascha Chandarka Vashvina Babo Te Baba Granta Nilayam Dadatham Shashvati Shamaha Not Brahma, not Vishnu nor Rudra, neither the sun, nor the moon, nor the Ashwin twins. Nobody has the authority to untie this knot. We put them together and we say, as long as creation exists, as long as the sun and the moon are shining in the heavens, as long as the gods are presiding, no one can separate this union. These are two divine individuals who have made a sankalpa of reminding each other of their divinity. And any other reason to get married, I can't think would be very fulfilling or sustaining for a long time. Now, after that time, we blindfold Shiva, sit him down in a, a chair decorated for a king, for, decorated for the Lord of the universe, and the, our bride and the worshippers circumambulate the Shiva in the center. And we bow down to him seven times on seven levels of consciousness we bow down to Shiva and surrender. All we want to give to Shiva is our highest respect symbolized by bowing down and our surrender symbolized by circumambulating Shiva in the center. And thereafter, Shiva is blindfolded. I accept blindly anything you want to offer me. What do you want to offer me, Durga? You want to offer me love and respect and surrender? I accept your offering without hesitation, without, without question. And now we let Shiva stand up and Durga stand up and we remove the blindfold. And then they get to look into each other's eyes. Shrubhudrishti, we call it. The pure vision, the darshan of godliness, the love. Yeah, our mouths speak many words, but through the eyes, there's a mirror to the soul. And when we look in deeply into each other's eyes, we can see the truth of everything our mouths have spoken. Now we come to the divine fire. We walk around the fire seven times and we offer the Gayatri Mantra. We celebrate every sanskara with Gayatri Mantra. Om Bur Puatswa Tatsavitur Bharidyam Bargo De Bashadimaki Dio Yoda Prachodoyad. Remember that Om the infinite beyond conception. Bur the gross body, the stool severe, the, everything that can be perceived through the senses. Bua, the subtle body, everything that can be conceived in the mind. Swa, the causal body, everything that can be known through intuition. Ta, that. Savitur is the name of the sun, the highest light of wisdom, the warmth of devotion. That highest light of wisdom, but in Yam Srish. The highest, most important, the ultimate. Bargo, the wealth. Devasha, of the gods. 
D. McGee, we contemplate that highest wealth of the gods, that light of wisdom, which is the highest wealth of the gods. Dio, give to us, Yonha, to us, give to us, Prach Udoya, make it rise continually. Give us continual increase in that light of wisdom upon which we meditate, that light of wisdom which is the highest wealth of the gods. Let it fill our, all our perception, protection in the gross body through the senses, protoi in the subtle body through the conceptions and in the mind, and swa in the causal body that are known through intuition and meditation. Every one of our samskaras is celebrated with the remembrance of the Mool Mantra of the Sanatan Dharma. It is the Mool Mantra, it is the root mantra. It is the root because there is no occasion which is inappropriate, in which we could we should not meditate upon the light of wisdom, which is the highest wealth of the gods, and pray that it continually grow and increase within us. It is the Mool Mantra because there is no time that it's not a correct, it's not appropriate to pray for more wisdom. So each one of these ceremonies is celebrated with Gayatri, the Gaya of the song of the wisdom of the three. Gayatri. This is the Gayatri mantra. Remember the story of Vishwamitra meditating in the forest. He was Vishwarath and then he became Vishwamitra when he found the Gayatri mantra which illuminating his consciousness. And Gayatri Devi said to him, look, you used to be Vishwarath, the conveyance of the universe. And now you have become Vishwamitra, the friend of the universe, because you have revealed this prayer for meditation upon the highest light of wisdom and the prayer that it eternally, continually grows and grows within us. So now after we do a recitation of the Gayatri Mantra, we take seven steps around the fire. Om Prajapati Rishir Ekapada Bira Chando Vishnu Deva Tapa the Kramani Yoga Om Mekamishai Vishnu Swat Nagatu Om Prajapati is the seer. One syllable Virat is the meter. Vishnu is the deity. The application is for taking the first step of these sacred vows, and the bridegroom says, and I won't bother you with the Sanskrit. We'll put that in the book later. He says, my beloved, our love comes into existence by our walking one step together. May Vishnu bless our activities on the earth, our children radiant with knowledge, peace and welfare, and happiness dwelling in our hearts. This is the first step which produces nectar. And the bride takes another step beside him and says, My husband, may wealth and food and sweetness fill our household. With this step, I promise to fulfill all of my responsibilities for the welfare of our family. And then they have another Vini Yog, and this is for taking the second step. And the bridegroom takes his step, and he says, My beloved, our love becomes strong by our walking this second step together. May Vishnu bless our activities on the earth, our children radiant with knowledge, peace and welfare and happiness dwelling in our hearts. This is the second step which allows refreshment. And the wife uh, takes a step beside him and says, My husband, with this second step, I promise to protect you from deficiency. When you are pained, to always inspire within you courage and to always rejoice in your happiness. 
So here we have the refreshment from the trials and tribulations of living in the worldliness. We take the mini yoga for the third step, and the bridegroom says, Oh, my beloved, by our walking this third step together, our love becomes full of wealth. And you remember, the wealth that we're talking about isn't just the, you know, the cash register. It's the wealth of Sri. Asha means Shanti. Ra means your mind. E means your heart. When you have peace in your mind and peace in your heart, this is known as a wealthy person. Oh, my beloved, by our walking this third step together, our love becomes full of wealth. May Vishnu bless our activities on the earth, our children radiant with knowledge, peace and welfare and happiness dwelling in our hearts. This is the third step which grants prosperity in every dimension. Swa asti. May being be your own. All existence belongs to me. Swasti. And the bride takes a step beside the husband. My husband, with this third step, I promise to eternally offer you my devotion, to share with you in all. I will regard no other man than you, and this will bring comfort to our house. And we take the Vini Yoga for the fourth step, and the bridegroom takes a step, and he says, by beloved, by our walking this fourth step together, our love becomes full of intensity. May Vishnu bless our activities on the earth, our children radiant with knowledge, peace and welfare and happiness dwelling in our hearts. This is the fourth step which bestows contentment. So we have... Just to review a little bit, we have the first step of nectar, the second step of refreshment, the third step uh, is uh, 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 the third step is prosperity, and this fourth step is uh, contentment. And the bride takes a step behind her, beside her husband, and says, "My husband." With this fourth step, I promise to anoint your body with fragrant perfumes and sandal paste and to adorn you with shining ornaments and flowers. This is the fourth step which beats those contentment. We take the Bini Yoga, we express the application for taking the fifth step, and the groom takes a step and says, My beloved, by our walking this fifth step together, our love becomes full of generation. That means we can create something, we can produce something. Not necessarily, or not exclusively, children, but our love becomes a chakra. Remember, Shiva and Shakti revolve around each other mutually and reciprocally. Who understands this understands what is a chakra, what is a center of energy. This center of energy creates. May Vishnu bless our activities on the earth, our children radiant with knowledge, peace and welfare and happiness dwelling in our hearts. This is the fifth step which bestows offspring. And the bride takes a step beside her husband and says, in both having and not having, I am with you. Remember when Sita gave up the pleasures of the palace to walk in the pathless forest along with her husband Ram. She said, what do I need with the luxuries of the palace if it doesn't have Ram? I would definitely take the trials and troubles and the tribulations of wandering in the forest as long as I could be with my husband. I share in your pleasures and pains. I will apply the wisdom you offer. Not the ignorance, not the stupidity. But I will apply the wisdom that you offer. This is the promise with which I take this fifth step. 
And now we take the meaning over the application of the sixth step. My beloved, by our walking this sixth step together, our love becomes immortal nectar. May Vishnu bless our activities on the earth, our children radiant with knowledge, peace and welfare and happiness dwelling in our hearts. This is the sixth step which bestows infinite delight. And the bride takes a step beside her husband and says, My beloved, by our walking this sixth step together, I promise I will participate with you in all religious sacrifices, in homas, in acts of charity, by which we can perfect our ways uh, ourselves in the ways of peace and harmony. Our, we can fulfill our highest ideal of manifestation in a human body by doing our dharma, in meeting the physical demands of life, in fulfilling our artha, and in the fulfillment of all desires and cessation of karma. Dharma, artha, karma gives us moksha. If we can perfect ourselves in the ideals of perfection and have enough resources sufficient to fulfill that ideal, then we are uh, going to achieve moksha. And then we take the Vini Yoga for the, uh, six, uh, 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 for, for the seventh step. And the bridegroom says, My beloved, by our walking this seventh step together, our love becomes eternal friendship which transcends these bodies of physical creation. May Vishnu bless our activities on the earth. Our children, radiant with knowledge, peace and welfare and happiness dwelling in our hearts. This is the seventh step by which we are united in God. The ultimate objective, the ultimate marriage, the seventh step on seven levels of consciousness, we bow down to each other, we surrender to each other, we accept each other, we, we accept blindly what is offered, and now, bur, ua, swa, maha, jana, tapaha, satyam. This is the seventh step by which we are united in God on the gross level, the subtle level, the causal level, on the level of all that is perceivable, all that is knowable, all that is light, all that is truth, consciousness, and bliss. And the bride takes a seventh step beside her husband and says, My husband, According to the holy law and witnessed by God, we have spoken these promises with purity and soundness of mind. With this seventh step, we promise to honor one another without transgressing the vows we have spoken. And these are the seven steps and the seven circumambulations around the fire, and the seven circumambulations around Shiva, and bowing down to Shiva on seven levels of consciousness, and Shiva accepting Shakti on seven levels of consciousness. They give blessings to each other, they exchange the garlands, and according to Hindu law, they are now pronounced man and woman. This is the meaning of the ceremony of Divya Viva. Let's talk about the ceremony for a little bit, and then we'll, in our next session, or when we have time next, we will discuss what are the rights and obligations of the parties. There are no errors in omissions clauses. It says we spoke these promises with purity and soundness of mind. We don't have any loopholes. There's no way out. As long as the sun and the moon are shining, as long as Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva are, are ruling the earth, there is no way to, to violate this, these covenants. Now, let's live up to our Sankalpa. 
and remind each other that we are divine and that's why we're here. Namaste. Let's see, Nanda. Oh my goodness. Uh, recording stopped because the format of the source media changed. I'm sorry. That means that none of our sources have recorded tonight. Let's go on uh, and ask any questions. Yes, Lolita Mas. Namaste. When you are competent to be a good partner, then you will find the right partner. When you know what you want for your life and how do you want that to express itself, then you will know how do you make that kind of relationship that fulfills that objective. And, and that's how you know. Someone who is organized and committed and focused and knows their path and knows how to manifest it and has a record of having kept their own son culpa. Someone who has respect for the guru. Someone who has respect for his spouse. Someone who has respect for his family. Someone who treats all with gentility and kindness. Someone who is a sadhu. Someone who is efficient. These would be some of the qualities that I would put into your questionnaire when you go out to interview prospective spouses. Nanda? Namaste, Manyama. Manya, it is very important to have a shared heritage and a shared belief between spouses. Uh, thereafter, you can, uh, you can engender in your family a common heritage and a common goal. If one partner goes off in one direction and another partner goes off in another direction, then uh, the, the children are left with uh, too many questions unanswered. So it will be very important to have a common traditions, a common goal, a common religious background so that you can share in that, in prosecuting your lives in a religious way. Namaste, Papia. skills, Papia. It would be very important to say to our partner or to our spouse, how is this activity going to enhance the unity of our family? Now let's, let's remind ourselves of the goal. Our goal is to create a harmony and a unity for our family. Not just to attain the momentary enjoyment or success, but to, to attain full success and full harmony. So I, I, the criteria for discrimination is, how does this help us to achieve our goal? And I think if we analyze the question from that standpoint of view, uh, Ultimately, we're going to come to a rational discussion. It doesn't have to be an emotional decision. It could become a rational discussion. Nanda. <laughs> Namaste, Rami, Mommy. Nice to have you in our class tonight. together. 
together. The family that worships together stays together. And that doesn't just mean going to church on Sunday. That means to actually sit down and do our daily practice together so that we maintain the harmony, the balance, the, the focus, the, the, the spiritual commitment together. I, I think that would be very important. Also, take walks together. Enjoy the nature together. Share your music together. Try to share with your partner as best as you possibly can. Invite them into your lives as much as you possibly can. I, I, I don't hesitate to enhance the romance. Share your lives with your partners on every level. None. Namaste, both of you from New Jersey and Atlanta with the same question. Thank you very much. I bow to you both. But now let me tell you, a word of advice is to be 
be very clear in defining what you want to do together. We're not just getting together as a sanskara or a ritual. This is not just a ceremony. This is a jivam sati. This is a life's partner. Now, here we are, trading the path of life. Let's see, where do we want to go in life and how are we most suited to get there together? Uh, that'll be the word of advice that I could offer to you, is be very clear about where you want to go and what role she has in your getting there. Nanda? Namaste, Devi Ma. Absolutely. Devi Ma, that's the best solution and the best suggestion. And that's why Ma wants us to write this book together. We can decide what kind of life do we want, what kind of relationship do we want, what kind of marriage do we want. We'll do the ceremony ourselves, or you'll come to the Devi Monday, we'll all do it together, and we'll start defining what is divinity to us. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What are the implications of leading a divine life? And thereafter, you'll take the next step of the rest of your life. Nanda? Namaste, Kumari Ma. The term respect in Sanskrit is also Shri. Shri means the respected. Shri Ma, the respected Holy Mother. Shri, Sha means peace. Ra means your mind. E means your heart. Listen to one another with peace in your mind and in your heart. That means really rock each other. Really listen to each other. Try to understand each other. Communicate. Not just in words, but listen and look and feel, grok each other. And that's respect. Communicate. Uh, in, in Sanskrit, our term for communication is Sanskrit. San means all together. Kri means do. Sanskrit, what we do together. Doing together is our communication. Now, please allow yourselves to communicate and listen to each other and perceive each other and listen to, inspire each other to share your dreams and visions and goals and what you want to perform, what you want to, uh, 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 what do you want to accomplish next. Don't give up on life. It's not like we have nothing left to do. The, the tree that does not produce new leaves is dead. We have to produce because there's only two op options. There's growth or decay. And there's a little interval between the two called stagnation. Neither stagnation nor decay is advisable, and that's why Sri Ma, in our old age, has me writing another book. Because we must continue to sprout new leaves. Nanda. Namaste, Manjushri. Na namaste to your whole family. Uh, please give blessings to all of our friends and family in Tehran. Get back on track. Get back on track. What do we want to do together? How do we want to do it? What's our purpose? What are our values? What do we stand for? Let's start talking again. Where do you want to go from here? What does our retirement look like? Where are our kids are going to get educated? What are, what are we going to do when we're, when we're 99 years old? How are we going to celebrate? What is our style of living and our standard of living? Dream with me. Take a vision quest with me. I invite you to come into my heart and see what's there. 
share with me what's in your heart. Share with, with me your dreams and your visions. Love means encouraging and inspiring the communication of others. I love you so much. I want to listen to you. I want to learn from you. I want to understand you because I love you. I certainly don't want to cut you off and push you into a corner and say, you attend to me when I feel like it. I want to inspire you and encourage you and, and, and in every way I can be the midwife to help deliver your highest dreams and aspirations. Namaste. Yes, Dish. Namaste. We have to keep communicating. We must keep communicating. We have to discuss it every day. What's your, what's on your plate today? What's your, what, what are your obligations today? What's going on in your department? And how can I help? How can I be a part of what you are doing in life? Those questions from each of us will help get us back on track and then it will help keep the relationship fresh and it will keep us inspired and productive. Mama? Yes, Rami, Mommy? Read the chutney pot every day. The king and the businessman went to the rishi and they asked him the same question. How do we make the mind sit still? And that was the sadhana of the chandi. And that's the, the best way that I can tell you. If Bhagavad Gita expresses the goal, then chandi expresses the path. It tells us how do you sit, how do you breathe, how do you chant, how do you give up all of your attachments to all the ripus, all the limitations. Do sadhana together and do it regularly. Nanda? Yes, Ambika. say a mantra, no one would object and say, hey, my husband, I'm offering you this consecrated food just because you are represent divinity to me. This is my puja. Hey, my husband, I'm putting a candle on the table so that it looks beautiful and turning the lights low so that there's no glare in your eyes. I'm putting a flower on the table just to let you know how much I'm privileged by your allowing me to share with you. We can make every activity puja. It doesn't just mean that you have to sit there and listen to me chant in a language that you don't understand. We could do it in a language he does understand, and if we do that, he will want to reciprocate. He will want to reciprocate. He'll want to say, hey, how can I do puja to you like you are doing puja to me? And then we have a divine union. Nana? Okay. Uh, the partner, then uh, at some time, 
there's going to develop a frustration and a separation. And when one person has a hunger, at some time they're going to go out to fulfill that hunger. And that creates a whole host of new problems. Easier we satisfy them in ways that are so easy, easy, and it doesn't mean just lying there and trying to be in the object of sexual lust, but we could demonstrate our love in so many ways and, and relieve them of, their, of the burden that they're feeling from their stimulation. So it's not just necessary to, to have sexual relation all the time, but it, it, would, be, it would be prudent not to make their mind wander. As a partner, I'd want to make my partner's mind stay at home as much as possible. I'd like to make their mind stay with me as much as possible. What do I have to do to do that? I'm willing to sacrifice. Are you? Nanda? Namaste, Kalima. Kalima, he is trying to uh, oh, he's, he is trying to to uh, allow you to make puja to him. Uh, it doesn't mean that his very participation is his respect to you, and he, that he takes you to church with him means that he's inviting you into his tradition while you are inviting him into your tradition. Eventually, you're going to reach a common tradition, and that will be the tradition of your family. I don't see any fault in anyone's behavior. Uh, you're both participating to the greatest extent that you can. Uh, just remember to be soft and sure and, and uh, inviting all the time. Nanda? Yes, ma'am. There are so many things that we can do. The first thing I said was to really, really bow down. And that doesn't mean the act of bowing down. That means the act of, of really accepting on every level of consciousness, of really surrendering on every level of consciousness, of trying to be the best partner possible. First thing. Then all the other promises that we made with these seven steps, we'll try to do that as well. And uh, in every other way, we'll try to work together to encourage the continual dialogue, the continual communication, which keep us focused on, and on track. Number. The, to build trust, we, we, we have to be trusting. Uh, we, we have to accept. We, that acceptance creates the security. Uh, so we resolve all our doubts before we make our commitment. This is a divine marriage re, for the purpose of reminding each other of our divinity. Oh, uh, and, and that's the way to build trust. Remember the reason we're doing this. Otherwise, it's not that much fun. Nanda? There should not be conflict. If you know there are different, different religious beliefs, you, before you make a commitment to work together, you have to negotiate what is our common ground. Where do you stand in relation to my beliefs? And how can I participate in your beliefs? And how do we reach, where is the commonality? 
and then make a commitment. Please, don't make a commitment for other reasons if you don't have a spiritual foundation. If you can't work together from the beginning, what, you think it's going to get easier after you live together for a while? Well, the groom and the bride are both representatives of divinity. And that means that their families are all divine as well. So now we have an opportunity to bring harmony to our families by demonstrating the highest respect. Of course, we want to help our families in any way that, ways that are possible. Of course, we want to create this bond of unity between all of our families. And I think that's a, another discussion that we'll continue in our next session. Om Song Saraswati Namaha Namaste.